he uh, pointed out that uh, this was incorrect and uh, she was right so the correct uh, so this uh, is actually incorrect what i have done uh, is incorrect over here and the circuit which we did prepared on this basis also is incorrect and i have uh, mentioned about this in this slide uh, the correct solution is like this so if you uh, this is the logic that we got uh, the statement was y equal to t equal to not a and b and c and we have to use only nand gates with two inputs so this could be achieved uh, if we just uh, double complement this then we get uh, we can uh, group b and c so it becomes uh, an associated operation b and c and then we can write we can write this as not of you see it's exactly the same thing what we are writing here is exactly the same thing but we are now arranging it in terms of the nand gates so here we consider this b and c it can be written as b and c not not so it's b and c itself so b and c not this is b nand c so b nand c Uh, is over here uh, b and c and uh, that's shown over here and then you have not a not a is obtained from here not a and then we have to take another not of this b and not b and c so that we get b and c so we take one more not and here we get uh this operation that is uh, not a nand b and c and uh, finally we have to again not it that is shown here in this part so we see that we require five nand gates to realize this maybe if you have an easier way you can share it with us uh, it could be possible i am not sure at the moment but on this uh, at mo at the moment uh, this is what occurs uh, so this is how you can uh, complete uh, the solution of this i had given you the assignment to uh, try this out uh, using nor gates instead of nand gates use this use nor gates with two inputs again to realize the same logic for t and copy so uh, with this correction i hope all of you will note this correction uh, we will proceed now to the next uh, we proceed now to the next yeah i proceed now to the next uh, part that is the op amp the topic on op amps where so we had discussed uh, in our last lecture about the framework of mechatronics about our attempt to link the digital world with the analog world and we had discussed that in this the operational amplifier plays a significant role and then we began uh, because it it is required for uh, the analog to digital conversion it's also required for signal conditioning it's also required in drive amplifiers uh, in, in a number of in digital to analog converters so it's required in a number of operations in the mechatronics framework and so we had set about uh, understanding the operational amplifier so we had seen that there are only two significant principles of the operational amplifier ideally the first one is that it is a very high gain device we had understood what the implications of that were and secondly 
it's a very high input impedance and very low output impedance device so uh, the implications of this uh, they we can see them as we come to the examples so the operational amplifier is like a source of potential and it can ideally provide any amount of current i not to obtain p not so this is what is the operational amplifier here we have uh, also discussed the inverting configuration of the operational amplifier and we applied the two steps uh, which we had applied earlier the two principles of the op amp in this configuration we have this resistance rf and here another rs and we applied the first principle that yielded that uh, bp which is directly connected to the actual ground uh, it uh, on account of this Uh, vp uh, vn uh, tracks it and it uh, goes to zero so this this becomes a virtual ground and it is because of the first uh, principle of the operational amplifier in the second one that is the it's a high input impedance device and low output impedance device we have in is almost equal to ip to zero so applying kirchhoffs current law we had come to this uh, part that v not is v output v o or v not is equal to minus rf upon rs times vi so the output is just a scaled version of the input and also its polarity is opposite so we could use it to invert the polarity of the signal we could also use it to attenuate the signal and also to amplify it so let's consider uh, another application of the operational amplifier as well uh, let us take yeah so we will just add a few things to this let us say that uh, we take more input we take one more input we have another input and let us say that this earlier input is vi1 uh, this second input here is this is uh, v i 2 and uh, here we have uh, the resistance let's say is r s 2 and uh, 
this one let us say is rs1 the current flow flowing through this let's call this as is1 and current flowing through this instance is i s so uh, this is what we have now let us uh, apply the principles of the operational amplifier uh, all that we have done is instead of one input now we have got two inputs so now when we apply the principles of the operational amplifier the first principle it's the same it's a high gain device so uh, it results in vp is equal to 0 it's almost equal to vn and so vn results in a virtual ground and secondly we have in uh, it's a very high uh, input impedance device so almost no current can pass through so in and ip are zero and so applying this we again get in so I'll just erase a few things here So IN is equal to IF plus this part. Yes, so we have uh, IF equal to IS1 plus IS2. And again, according to the same analysis, we get IF. So IN is almost equal to 0. And IF is a V input minus n divided by rf plus is1 is vi minus vn divided by rs1 plus VI, so this is VI1, VI2 minus VN divided by RS. And this is equal to 0. So you can see it's just the summation of this that's equal to the current IN and that is equal to 0. So again, we know that uh, Vn has become a virtual ground. So this is 0. This part is 0. And so we get uh, V output is equal to minus Rf into V I one by R S one plus V I two by R S. So what have we achieved here? We could uh, rewrite this slightly. Write it a little differently.
so we can write this as v output output potential v not equal to minus r f by r s one into v i one plus uh, r sorry it should be minus in because we are now multiplying inside so minus r f by r s one r s two That by v i so this is uh, what we get and uh, what do we observe here what is the outcome of this uh, discussion what have we achieved through this circuit yes can anyone tell me Yes, anybody? Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, so, what have we achieved in this? You see, again, uh, we have. here output as a scaled sum of vi1 and vi2 not only the a sum but also the polarity has been inverted so you can see that we are having a factor a factor of multiply uh, a multiplying term here a multiplying gain here minus rf by rs1 rf by rs1 this gets multiplied by the input vi1 if we were to make rf equal to rs1 then we would have got one over here so it would just have been minus vi1 and here it would have just if we had made this numerator and denominator the same it would just have been minus vi2 so you can do scaled addition of signals you can weigh Uh, apply weightages to signals depending upon the choice of rs1 and rs2 and you can sum up signals so this configuration is also called as a summing configuration so op amp in the summing configuration so this is the summing configuration and what are the points here one is uh, we have inverted the polarity and secondly we have got a weighted sum of input signals so this is quite a um, good achievement because in real time as signals are required if signals are required to be added 
uh, we can use this circuit continuously add up signals two signals okay so this is the second application of the operational amplifier and we are going to put it to good use now let us consider uh, yet another application Uh, now, in this, let us make a slight change. Uh, let us uh, first of all copy this page and also change the location of this. Yeah, so now. Uh, let us consider another configuration of the operation amplifier. Uh, we'll again modify this, and uh, here also, well, this up till here we can keep it the same. So now let us see the other configuration that is uh, we'll just replace this resistance here. Just to delete this. We'll just replace this. We'll just replace. Capacitor. Can you tell me what is this configuration called? Yes. Anybody? Capacitor. Capacitor. So, what is this configuration of the operational amplifier called? No, sir. Have you not done it in your uh, course on basic electronics in the first year? So, we didn't have the course on basic electronics. We had it for electrical science. Yeah, electrical sciences. That's it. I mean, the content was also. Uh, considered uh, the operational amplifier. You, you had a topic on that, isn't it? No, sir. Maybe you have not done it, but I am sure it was there in your syllabus. Okay, anyway, let's not worry about that. Uh, let's take this as a good opportunity to uh, review this topic. Okay? So, once again, uh, we start with the principles of the operational amplifier. All that we have done is we have got a capacitor here now in this op amp circuit. Everything else remains the same. And here uh, you can see that the first step remains the same because VP is grounded. So this uh, non inverting end is grounded. So VP is equal to zero. And so a VN becomes a virtual ground again. So this first part is the same. What about the second part? Uh, the second part tells us that it's a high input impedance device, very high input impedance and low output impedance device. So any amount of current can pass through. But uh, here, as far as the input to the op-amp is concerned, no current can pass through. 
so here i n is equal to 0 but i n is actually equal to i s plus i f now what is uh, i s we already know so here we have uh, we have i n equal to 0 that's fine we know that we know i s what is i s the same thing vi minus vn divided by rs and so we'll straight it straight away write this as uh, we'll straight away write this as vi minus vn so vn is zero so vi upon rs we'll write this as Now what is I F? Can you tell me what is I F here? You have done in your twelfth standard also. You are right. So what we do here for the capacitor, we make use of the basic relationship for the capacitor. If you recall, uh, the basic what is the basic relationship for the capacitor? Uh, we know that. you remember this relationship which you studied u equal to c v uh, in this case v is a potential across the capacitor which is v not minus vn okay so this is v not minus vn and we know that vn is actually zero virtual ground Uh, if you differentiate this if you differentiate this what do you get you get the current current to the capacitor this is the charge which accumulates on the capacitor so this is actually equal to the rate of flow of charge rate of accumulation of current or flow of charge and that is equal to derivative of c into d okay this is what we get now for practical purposes c is usually taken as a constant capacitance and so you get c d v by okay so what is the what is the if here in this case if is equal to c d d not by s okay this is it Save what we have done so far. Yes. So, how is the output related to the input? You see, here we have the output, but here we have the derivative of the output. So, derivative of the output potential is equal to this one. So, we can write uh, E V output. this is going to be equal to minus 1 uh, upon uh, rs into c into vi 
Okay. I've just taken this term to the other side and then taken this C. It goes in the denominator there and sign changes. So we can see here that we get the rate of change of the output potential is equal to this. Now, if we integrate this and uh, if we integrate this, how are we going to integrate it? We can write this in terms of the time derivative. We can write it as uh, the differential for this will be say d, d output and this is equal to minus 1 upon r s c into uh, v i into d t. Okay, so we have just done the separation of the differentials and we can integrate this. So when we integrate this, we can integrate it up to the present potential, potential at the time t okay. from whatever past potential. Suppose uh, we were uh, in the past, so we so let me first integrate both these sides. So this is uh, up to the present time t. So if we are using t as a variable, naturally we can't use the same. Uh, so we'll have to make use of a dummy variable. Let's uh, replace this uh, t by the dummy variable tau. So here let's take tau. Okay. So this tau, we are integrating up to t, up to the present time t. And let us start from some initial time ti. Okay. So here we will have the potential v at the time ti. In fact, we could have used uh, another variable over here, a uh, name, variable name. I'm just writing it as V, like this slightly modified V. So it tells us that um, we can write this as this operation becomes V not at the time T. minus v not at the time ti is equal to minus. You see, rs and c are constants. So this becomes 1 upon rs c. And here we have the integral from ti to T and this is V I T tau. That means we are, uh, if we start with some initial value of a signal V naught okay, at the time T I, and we will get uh, an output continuously, V output as equal to v output minus 1 upon rsc into this okay so here if you choose v naught as equal to 0 okay you set it initially output potential as equal to 0 then you can see that you are getting you are able to scale the output uh, you can change its polarity and also you can scale it and uh, produce a integral of the input so you are integrating the input potential, input vi, up to the present time t. So it's a continuous integration. As time passes, the integration is continuously taking place. And uh, these are factors, uh, these are multipliers, rsc. So you can multiply it by this, 1 upon rsc. 
of course polarity changes you can start with zero time and you can start up you can do up to some present time so it says that the output potential output potential is obtained by continuously integrating the input potential so what you are getting is an integral of the input it's a significant achievement if you want to integrate signals so you want to integrate a sine wave or a cosine wave or a triangular wave okay or a trapezoidal wave you can easily do this you can integrate a square wave you can follow this circuit and you can so here we have the op amp in the configuration which is called as the integrating configuration is an integrator so we have seen a number of uh, uh, we'll take one more we can also see the differentiating configuration that's also obtained similarly let's save this first and here let's go back to the previous slides we make a copy of this we will make some slight modifications of this now instead of uh, the capacitor earlier capacitor there let's have the capacitor here so we have another configuration and what is this configuration called let us see so again we will erase this part here also we can this part almost the same here we will have the capacitance c the first step is exactly the same second one is in is it's a high input impedance device and therefore in ip are zero so in is equal to if so this is if plus is equal to zero and here we have uh, the same analysis i f now you know what is i f in this case okay exactly the same thing as we did earlier so q is equal to c v so d q by d t d q by d t and this is equal to i s and this will be equal to what c d by dt of the difference of potential that is vi 
minus Vn. But we know that Vn is uh, a virtual ground, and so this is zero, and so we get I f as equal to V output minus zero. So I'll straight away write it. Divided by R F plus I S. I S is obtained from here. I S is equal to C B B I I. So and I N is actually equal to C. So we see that V output is actually equal to minus uh, what do we have? Minus R S uh, R F. into C into D V I so what does this circuit do yes can you tell me it's clear it's differentiation it's differentiating the input potential with respect to time. So here we have derivative, time derivative of Vi and it's multiplying it with the scaling factor Rfc. It's a gain. So Rfc, it can be determined by you. You can design it. What is the gain you want to multiply with? And that should be equal to the output. So the output potential here uh, is actually a derivative, time derivative of the input a scaled time derivative of the input with, of course, uh, inverted polarity. So it inverts the polarity and also differentiates so it's a scaled time derivative of the input signal. So I think we can pause our lecture over here. Anybody having uh, any query so far? Anyone who has not understood everything properly? What was discussed in this lecture? You can ask me if you have any doubts.